Hello, welcome back. In this module, we're going to introduce two new types of cash flows. They are called annuities and perpetuities. Annuity is defined as a set of cash flows that has the same amount that occur at regular intervals. The, this is probably the most common form of financial securities. If you think about um, your car payment, they are the same amount every single month. Your rent is the same amount every month. Your mortgage, home mortgage payment is the same amount every month. Because this is such a common form of financial contracts, uh, we want to devote more time talking about annuities. Within annuity, we can further classify it into two types. If the payment occurs at the end of the period, it's called an ordinary annuity. In fact, if something is referred to as annuity without the word ordinary, you can assume that it is an ordinary annuity. Um, however, if cash flow occurs at the beginning of each period, then it's called an annuity deal. So if you think about your um, Rent, rent is oftentimes due at the beginning of the month, uh, whereas your credit card payment is often due at the end of the month. So that's just two very common um, financial instruments that you have that you encounter on a daily basis. And one follows the form of an ordinary annuity, your credit card, and the other is an annuity due, your rent payment. A perpetuity is just an ordinary annuity that lasts forever. Uh, and it is a very special form, and we'll talk about that. One thing about annuity and perpetuity that we want to keep in mind is that interest, compound, uh, interest should be compounded at the same frequency as payment. So in other words, if it is a monthly annuity that you make the cash flow occur on a monthly basis, then interest rate should also be comp computed on a monthly basis. Here's a picture on a timeline of what an ordinary annuity looks like. So remember that for an ordinary annuity, the cash flow occurs at the end of each period. So you receive $100 at the end of year one, $100 at the end of year two, $100 at the end of year three. Uh, it's important for us to remember uh, to get used to what an annuity looks like on a timeline so that when you um, work on a problem, all you have to do is trans translate the cash flow onto a timeline and you know how to solve it appropriately. Uh, on the other hand, an annuity deal, we know that the cash flow occurs at the beginning of each period. So the $100 that received at the beginning of year one, so this is $100 that we receive at the end, beginning of year one. So the beginning of year one is here. Uh, and this is $100 that we receive at the beginning of year two, at the beginning of year three, and so forth. So notice that the investment horizon for both annuity, so investment horizon is N, in both cases, the investment horizon is three. However, in the annuity deal, the cash flow occurs at the end of each period, it's very obvious. At the, uh, at the annuity deal, the cash flow occurs at the beginning of each period. So it almost appears as though that you get the cash flow um, offset, but it still, you still receive a total of three cash flows. So the investment horizon is still three, time, uh, three years. Now here are the formulas associated with annuities. For a perpetuity, um, because it lasts forever, we must use the formula. So for the formulas for the perpetuity, um, I recommend that you turn to the end of your notebook and record down this uh, formula. So the perpetuity formula says that the cash flow is in that the cash flow or the present value of the cash flow as of year zero, today's present value, is equal to cash flow that starts in year one divided by the interest rate. There's also formulas for computing annuity. However, um, it's really not very practical to apply formulas to compute annuities. So for annuities, uh, I will rely on using the financial calculator. So if you, um, I would not recommend um, using the um, formulas for computing annuities. Now we saw that the main difference between annuity deal and, and an annuity deal and an ordinary annuity is the timing of the cash flow. Remember that for an ordinary annuity, the cash flow occurs at the end of each period, 
and for the annuity due, the cash flow occur at the beginning of each period. But you get the same amount of cash flow and the same number of cash flow. So really the difference is one time period. Now in finance, we know the time value of money is important. So if you get your money in the beginning rather than at the end, that means you have the money with you longer. And by having the money with you longer, you are able to earn more interest. So the relationship between an annuity due and an annuity is exactly that one period's worth of interest. So if you know the present value of an annuity, you, get, you, you can just add one period's worth of interest. So multiply by one plus the interest rate, that will give you the present value of an annuity due. The same relationship applies to the future value of an annuity. So as I mentioned earlier, we'll rely on the financial calculator primarily when we are working with annuity problems. So we're using the basic time value of money functions on your calculator. And the one additional key that we'll introduce is the PMT or the payment key, which represents the annuity payments. Uh, when we are working with annuities, the inflow outflow assumptions have be become more important. So the best way to illustrate this is to take a look at an example. Let's say this is a savings problem. You are going to deposit $550 a month into your account that has an APR of 9% based on monthly compounding. How much will you have in the account in 35 years? So I want to point out a number of things in this problem. First is that your payment, your deposit, occur on a monthly basis because you're putting aside $50 a month. And we also know that the question tells us that compounding is done on a monthly basis. So we have monthly com compounding. So that's good. We have a check that compounding frequency and payment frequency is the same. And we have an annuity. So the first thing is identifying what kind of uh, problem we are working with. So we confirm that this is an annuity. And we can also write the timeline that shows how does this annuity work. So we know that each month we are going to we are going to put aside $50. So we have $50 occurring every single month. Now this is stated in years, but we know that we're working with months. And when I'm working with annuities or time value of money, I always write down months so that I will um, know that I should not write down 35 years, but in fact, instead I will write down um, 35 years times 12 months per year. So I'm doing the deposit for 420 months. So if you, if you need a minute to think about this, please pause the video. So now we have the investment horizon. So the investment horizon is that we will invest $50 per month for 420 months. At an interest rate, we have an APR of 9%. But once again, we are working with months. So our interest rate is not 9%, is 9% per year. So APR is annual percentage rate, but month, but interest is compounded on a monthly basis. So we have converted that into a monthly rate. So that's actually 0.75% per month. So writing down the time unit will help. So now we have all the information we need. We have the investment horizon, we have the interest rate. We also know the deposit amount. So this is the new thing that we are using. So this is not our future value or present value, but instead this is our annuity. So an annuity amount is $50. We ask how much will you have in the account in 35 years? So what we are asking to find is the future value. So let's take a look. Let's use our financial calculator to help us. So remember to use second function clear TVM to reset all the register. Um, we have $50 is our payment. And you can decide whether to put that as an inflow or an outflow. Since we are depositing the money, so we assume that this is an outflow, so we are putting aside $50 payment. 
per month and we have 420 months so 420 is n our interest rate is 0.75 percent so 0.75 i we are computing the future value because we know we are finding the future future value so at the end of 420 months or 35 years we'll have 147 dollars and 89 cents um if we make the deposit of $50 a month for a total of 35 years. Let's practice on another example. Um, this time I'm gonna let you try this out. So pause the video and see if you can solve this problem. This is annual, uh, the deposit is on an annual basis and compounding is done on an annual basis. The question is how much would you have in your, in your IRA account after 40 years? Did you get $454,513? So again, let's do second function clear TVM. In this case, we have $2,000 is our payment. And we leave it in the account for 40 years. And the interest rate is 7.5%. We're computing the future value. Okay, great, fantastic. Now let's see what will happen to our savings if you are able, if you start today, meaning that instead of waiting at the end of the first year, you're going to start today. And you also still make 40 deposits, but you'll make the deposit at the beginning of each time period. So what we have online, what, what do we call that? If we make our deposit at the beginning of each period instead of at the end of each period, we'll have an annuity deal. So if this, if this is an annuity deal, we already know the future value of an annuity. So we can find the value of an annuity deal. So if you, if you are saving, saving $2,000 per year, over a 40 year period, even if you sh just make the deposit at the beginning versus at the end, you end up with quite a bit more money after 40 years. So that's the power of compounding. So this is one way to find the value of an annuity deal. And that is first find that value of an ordinary annuity and then you multiply it by one plus the interest rate. There's another way to find the value for an, uh, for an annuity deal, and that is using your calculator directly. So first, let's clear our register. To set the cash flow to be an annuity deal instead of an ordinary annuity, we need to change the mode to begin mode. So there's a second function. So we'll go second function, and we want to change that. Right now, it's set to, is, is set such that all cash flows are assumed to be at the end of, of each period. If you want to change that, we'll have to use the set function. The, second fu the set function again is a second function. So if you use the set function, so second function set, you'll see that now it changed the assumption from ending to beginning. So if you clear to get out of the menu, you'll see that BGN or begin mode is still is in effect now in your calculator. So we can enter the same problem. $2,000 is our payment at 7.5% interest over 40 years. And, and we can compute the future value. Notice that the future value is now the future value of an annuity deal. This is very important. If you do change your calculator do, to do this calculation, make sure that you change it back. So you want to go second function BGN, and now you use the set function one more time. So second, second function set, that will reset it back to the cash flow assuming at the end of each period. And notice that the indicator is gone. So practice this until you're comfortable because uh, you do not want to leave your calculator in the, in the begin mode. Um, once again, ordinary annuities are much more common than annuity deal.